Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to my jungle. Thank you so much for stopping by. So today's video is gonna be really exciting and it's one that I've been wanting to film for a really long time. Uh, it took me quite a while to gather all of the participants for this video, but today is actually gonna be my philodendron collection, my entire philodendron collection I'm gonna show you in this video. Wow, I definitely have a lot more than what I actually initially was thinking. I don't know the exact number. Uh, I've not counted them, but I have decided that as I put them back in their places, I'm going to count them today when I'm done filming. So I'll probably put it on the screen somewhere, we'll see. So if you guys are interested in checking out every single philodendron I have currently in my home, then stick around and we will jump right into it. These are in no particular order, but the first plant that we are gonna talk about today is this beautiful philodendron lemon lime upright. I really didn't think that I was going to love this particular philodendron as much as I do. I didn't know it was gonna be as beautiful as it is in person. I had purchased two of these off of Gabriella Plants. Uh, one of them I sent to Pam's Planty Things and I was planning on sending the other to someone in the future in a swap or as an extra, what have you, but I don't know, it, it was, so much smaller than this. It was def It was like three times the size it is now whenever I got it. I just kind of fell in love with it and now it has grown so much. It's grown so many new stems, so many new leaves. I, I couldn't even tell you. I mean, it just, it's non-stop with this plant. There's new growth points literally everywhere. I think it's the color that really got me. Like whenever you see this beautiful uh, neon lime green in person, it's just, it's really attractive to the eye. But yeah, this plant has grown so very much and it's beautiful. I love it and I'm really happy that I did decide to keep him. So basically I'm just going to be grabbing plants as based off of whoever's closest to me and go from there. So up next is my philodendron brandy that I scored from NSE Tropicals. This plant, I found a little bit of webbing on it, so it's currently in quarantine. When I put it in that um, humidity box that I made, it immediately started to develop mold. So I'm actually, I have it ventilated now, so my other plants don't do that. But this one was hit the worst. It lost like five leaves in just a couple days. So, I took it out and uh, treated it and now it's in isolation. She is absolutely gorgeous. I just love the beautiful silver leaves. So pretty, so soft and smooth. The leaves are very, very thin on the Brandianum. So they are quite easy to rip or damage. These plants do prefer higher humidity, so that's why I threw it in the humidity box. Turns out this girl's gonna be getting a small humidity box of her own. Hopefully that helps to keep away the spider mites as well. I'm also going to be repotting her. Clearly she's top heavy, she needs a bigger pot, but the philodendron brandy is a beautiful, beautiful plant. Absolutely gorgeous. You know, I might actually get a um, cookie jar or something like that to put her in and just leave the top vented. I think that would probably work out really well. And then I could put the perlite in the bottom. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm giving myself ideas here. This is my philodendron padatum. This guy has struggled a little bit in the past. He had spider mites, like pretty much every single one of my plants at this point, right? He was shipped in the winter and uh, it took a really, really rough toll on him. He had a rough trip, but he has put off tons of new leaves. He has lost some, some leaves, some older leaves but he's put off several new ones. I just think he's a really funky guy. I don't know. I think this plant is really, really adorable, really funky and cute, quirky. I don't know. He's just really fun to look at. Some of the leaves are similar shaped and others are just completely, completely different. You just, you never know. I really, I really love it. I love this guy. He's super easy as well. As long as you can keep the spider mites away. I did, say a while back that 
I do believe that philodendrons, even the more uncommon type of philodendrons, are a really great option for beginner plant parents. I think that uh, it's they're, for the most part, most of them, at least growing in my home, are very easy. They're very easy, they're very fuss free. Many of them, you know, like the melanocrysum. The more tropical type of philodendrons prefer higher humidity, but honestly, I think they do just fine with, with 50% 50, 50 you're good. You don't need to really pump the humidity up at 70% at all times. Uh, they're not really gonna throw a fit. You will get larger leaves if you pump up the humidity, but they're not gonna require it. So that's a really great thing about philodendrons. Um, and they're also just really fast growing in general. They grow very fast. You can propagate them super easy. They root very easy. Just awesome plants. What's not to love about philodendrons? Okay, I had to throw my hair up because it was driving me crazy. It's just so frizzy. But next up, I thought we could talk about my tangled philodendron micans. Oh, she's so nice. So nice, so velvety. I struggled with this plant for a little while, just kind of figuring out what it wanted from me exactly. This one I found to be a little bit more finicky than any of my other philodendrons, if we're being honest, probably because it's a velvet leaf type. But I found that I had it potted in a pretty small pot, and I still do, but it was in terracotta, and it was small terracotta, very well draining soil. I think the problem was this plant was just drying out way too fast. I was getting a lot of yellow dead leaves. So I did move it to ceramic and Sarah actually had sent me a piece of hers. So I just added it. It's all tangled, it's okay. <laughs> I added it in with mine. Ever since I switched it to ceramic and added Sarah's piece in with it, it has done fabulous. It's done very well. This lives right above my humidifier and I think it really loves that extra boost of humidity. It also lives over by my grow light, not under it, but it does catch some of the light coming off of the, the light itself. But she's very beautiful. This is definitely one of my absolute favorite plants. If you're wanting a philodendron melanocrysum and you don't want to put out the money for it, I think this would be a really great alternative. The leaves on the micans do very much resemble the juvenile leaves on a melanocrysum. So it's like a, melanocry a trailing melanocrysum with juvenile leaves. But the velvet is the same. They have the red backings. Just a really gorgeous plant. She looks beautiful where she lives, trailing off of the shelf over there. And I just love her so much. I think everybody, every plant parent should definitely have a Mikeins because such a beauty. Here we have my adorable little baby Florida ghost, Mint. Now somebody mentioned uh, in one of my comments about this plant that they thought that the uh, mint didn't exist. And I have heard that, but I, I have no idea. I couldn't tell you. I purchased this little babe as a mint from Camilla's House of Plants. These are older leaves. This is an older leaf right here. And as you can see, it hasn't lost that minty uh, variegation. So the regular Florida ghost, the leaves come in a, a lighter color, typically more white. And then over time they fade to a green. Um, the mint supposedly is keeps this minty color and mine does this here is his newest leaf and as you can see it does have that pretty minty variegation to it so I mean I'll keep my eye on it and see as the leaves continue to come in if the minty ones do eventually fade to green but these old ones here have not so I'm really not sure I've had this guy for a year now yeah right out a year so it's just so cute such a cute little philodendron would love to have a, the, a large one of these, just a large Florida ghost in general. I would love to have one. One day this little guy will be a beautiful large ghost. Here we have my quirky philodendron Adebo Poense. And woo, he's crazy. He definitely needs a pole or something. Mostly just for support because he's growing straight up and getting kind of wonky. I mean, he's supporting himself pretty good, if I do say so myself, but just a little bit wobbly, you know what I mean? Eventually he will need a support pole. This is the first leaf that he gave me, and then he was in a smaller pot. Then he put off this leaf, which I noticed was 
noticeably smaller than any of his previous leaves. And then he put off this leaf, which is a whole lot smaller than any of the other leaves. So I was like, okay, he's pot bound, he needs a bigger pot. It's time. So I did up him to, I think this is, this is probably actually like a seven inch planter, I would say. And he's trying to push off a new leaf now. So I'm really anxious to see if it's gonna be stunted as well, or if it's gonna be bigger than the last normal size or what but we will see i love this plant i think the way that the leaves point uh is really neat and then i absolutely adore the it's not even red it's like a purple purplish backing on the back side of these leaves it's so pretty just a really cool plant um i got this from green spaces and so far it's been really easy going really easy going and i think that he looks really nice paired with this baby blue planter and I remember guys I'm saving my largest philodendrons for last this is my baby philodendron Birkin I bought this as a teeny tiny plug it didn't even have the striped pattern on the leaves yet and had no problem waiting for it to grow into an adult but it has started producing the beautiful striped leaves, this being its newest leaf here. He's putting off a new leaf right here. So he's doing really well. I just recently up-potted him into this four inch pot. He's a little bit wobbly, I'm not sure why, top heavy-ish, but he's doing good. This little seedling is a philodendron gloriosum from Alex at Beantown Houseplants. We did a swap and she threw this in as a surprise extra. It's very cute. It has put off a couple more leaves and they are bigger than its originals. So that's really exciting. This guy is living in a Ziploc bag in sphagnum moss. He was rooted, but uh, his roots weren't, he, did, he doesn't have a significant root system yet. So I went ahead and placed him in moss. Oh, and I just noticed. There's a new leaf coming out right there. Very cool. Oh, I can't wait to see how big that one is. Oh, so exciting. So yeah, my little baby Gloriosum's doing really well. I think he looks so cute in this little glass terrarium. I love him so much. So this is the plant that I initially thought was a Gloriosum, but with the help of a friend, <laughs> uh, I discovered that this is actually a Philodendron Glorious and I did recently propagate him. He had a stem coming out with two more leaves on it, uh, the top cutting, but I recently chopped him to send to Alex. Yeah, um, it's absolutely gorgeous. The Glorious is a Melanochrysum and Gloriosum hybrid. You take Gloriosum, Melanochrysum, and they have a baby. This is what you get. It is beautiful. So the leaves used to be a lot larger on this. Um, it had really large, beautiful heart-shaped leaves but it had suffered really, really bad with spider mites. I did not know, I wasn't aware that it even had spider mites. I hadn't had them before, so I didn't really have a lot of experience with what to look for. They really took a toll on that plant. I lost all of the original leaves and it's basically grown back. It's, it's just restarted. The whole plant has had to restart. And it's doing really well now, but I will say that since I cut it, it pushed out a new growth point, but this is the leaf it just put off, this teeny little leaf here interesting fact about philodendrons they produce a sap you will find droplets of that sap up and down the stem on the leaves and it's sticky just like the residue or the poo that plant pests leave behind on your leaves so I didn't know that at first and I was really confused because I kept finding that sap on all my philodendrons but no sign of pest no other sign of pest so yeah something to note most all philodendrons do it so he suffered with uh, spider mites last year but he's doing well now not sure what this funky little tiny ugly leaf is about maybe he's just a little bit mad that I cut him I don't know but there is another leaf coming in out of that one so hopefully this plant straightens itself out can't wait until the leaves get large again and this plant is velvety as well like the melanochrysum really beautiful here we have my philodendron silver sword narrow form so whenever I purchased this, I didn't actually know there was a narrow form. I thought they were all the same. Um, I had mostly only seen the, I guess it's just the regular, small, 
form, small leaf form, and that is the one that I really wanted and was in love with. And it seems to look, it seems to have more of that blue shimmer to it than the narrow form. Correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe it's just like seeing it in picture versus in person type thing. But this is what I ended up with. It was the narrow form. And I do like this plant, but it just grows really funky. Uh, I took a cutting and sent to a friend, and this was the first leaf that it popped off after I did that, this teeny tiny thing. Like, I don't know what the heck, um, but it, it's trying to push out a new leaf there. But then here recently, it put off these smaller leaves as well. I'm not really sure. It, it's just kind of awkward. Ow. Okay. <laughs> It's just kind of awkward looking at this point, so I'm probably going to chop chop it back down and see if I can get some normal size leaves down around the base of the plant because I'm just not a fan of the way it looks right now with all these crazy leaves, crazy different sizes. But this is my silver sword. Up next, we're going to talk about this pretty pink gal. This is my pink princess, and... She rerooted and she grew back after root rot within the last year. Uh, she actually lived in sphagnum moss until about a month ago, maybe six weeks ago, and I decided to finally pot her up. Oh, I forgot about this leaf. I think this was, okay, so this was the first one that she put off that had a good chunk of variegation, and it is a, it is a beautiful pastel pink. So yeah, I forget about this leaf. Here we have a dead, very old leaf that I need to remove. Finally, she put off this leaf and it's not the pinkest. It's more of a whitish cream color, but that gave me hope. And then this one has some of that light, it's kind of pinkish cream color spotting in it. And then, oh, would you just look at this leaf? It's a half moon, it's gorgeous. This doesn't even look green, it looks more black like black and pink which is just oh my gosh it's absolutely beautiful in person guys I love it I'm not a huge fan of the pink princess in general but this one whenever it produces leaves like this I mean obviously I am and then I took it out of the ziploc bag so it put off this semi funky shriveled leaf here which was to be expected as it's you know trying to adjust to the humidity in my home but now she's pushing off this leaf and oh my gosh, it does appear to be another half moon leaf. So it definitely has a lot of pink in it. The pink's a really beautiful bubblegum color. So I'm very excited about this leaf. Um, it looks like it may be a little bit wrinkly like this one, but I think it's acclimating and adjusting pretty well considering and I'm just really excited to see that pink. Two half moon leaves. I don't even know what to make of it, but I'm really excited for her. This is my philodendron moonlight, another Gabriella plants purchase. And I don't really know what to say about this plant other than very, very easy. I also have the Prince of Orange and they have, you know, pretty much the same growth pattern. One comes in yellow, lime green, one comes in orange. They're both very easy, very low maintenance, require very little light, and just grow really fast. So I really love this guy. I haven't had any trouble out of him. He's survived spider mites, I don't know how many times. Here's a new leaf here. Such a pretty uh, neon color, I really love it. And then they fade to just kind of a light green. Very cool plant. Not a whole lot to say about it, but I do uh, love it a lot. Okay, he's huge. He's grown so, so much. I've never repotted this guy. Definitely is due for an up pot as well, but look at him, he's huge. These large leaves do collect quite a bit of dust over time, but when you clean them, they're just so shiny and beautiful. This is a new leaf. It's putting off a new leaf right here. This was his last leaf. This was his next to last leaf. And then these are the older green leaves. So it does take a while for the leaves to actually fade from the orange to a green. He's growing towards the light at the moment. I really love this guy. Ah, he's just so massive. I, I can't get over it. This guy's really growing towards the light. I really need to do better at turning my plants. This is my philodendron ring of fire. He's doing great. He puts off probably a new leaf every month. 
about once every four weeks, I would say. The cool thing about this guy is, is he put this out, I don't know, a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, and so I can't really show you, maybe on the backs, but whenever the Ring of Fire puts off a new leaf, the variegation will be this lovely pink color for a, the longest time until the leaf hardens off, uh, and then it just turns to kind of like a, a lighter green, like this. Sometimes they do keep a little bit of the pink uh, hue. But yeah, it's really cool. I've never seen a plant put off pink variegation like that that turns to green. But it's a very interesting one. This is basically a variegated narrow form, philodendron narrow form or jungle boogie, you may hear it referred to as. Here's his new leaf he's putting off now. He's also needing an up pot, clearly. Obviously, I keep my plants in the smallest pots possible for as long as possible because of space. So he's doing really good. Really funky, really cool little plant. Really easy, once again. This is my philodendron painted lady who also arrived. Well, no, she was good for about a month and then I overwatered her, I assume, and rotted the roots away. So she actually lived in moss for almost eight, probably like eight months. She lived in moss and rerooted. Then she got hit with spider mites um, and she lost some leaves. I also took a small cutting and sent to Rachel, I believe. Since cutting her, okay, I cut her right here. Uh, when I, after I cut her, she pushed off this growth point here. Look at this tiny leaf, guys. What is that? It's like she's just like throwing a fit. Like most of the times my philodendron push off regular size leaves. Sometimes get a tiny leaf like this, but they always do, you know, eventually put off normal leaves again. So don't worry. If, you're, if your plant does this, don't worry. My philodendrons hadn't been fertilized in a couple months. And I know that's a huge problem for them because they're used to being fertilized very often. But this is the leaf she just now, literally like yesterday, unfurled. And you know, it's a little bit bigger than this dinky thing. And there's another leaf coming in. I don't know if you can see or not, but right here. Um, so I assume it's gonna be larger than this one. And eventually it'll go back to hopefully larger than the, the normal size. You don't really know what you're gonna get. Some of the leaves come in more of a green color. You can see like a, a nice chunk of dark green variegation right here. But then some of the leaves are more marbled, not marbled, um, kind of like the mint, kind of minty, that's a good word. Some of them are more minty, like this. But I think where she was sick, you know, she's not putting off the greatest leaves right now, um, or she hasn't over the last few months, but she will get her swag back. I have faith in her. So that is my painted lady. I just showed you this guy on my last video but this is my bipinifolium or horsehead philodendron doing very well I love the shape of these leaves very cool very funky look at this leaf completely different you just never know you just never know what you're gonna get he's putting off a new leaf as well I'm gonna either chop him soon I may propagate him along with some of my other plants chop the tops root them and then plant them back down in the base of the pot to make the plants more full all around instead of top heavy, you know? Would like to have more lush and full plants. So that's probably gonna happen in the future, but yeah, my philodendron bipinifolium. I also showed you this guy in my last video, but this is my philodendron Burl Marks. I'm not gonna say too much about him because I raved about him in my previous video, but you guys already know I love him with all my heart and soul. I think he's beautiful, mostly putting out variegation around the bottom of the pot but that is A-OK. -okay. Look at this leaf, it's all lime green. It's, an, it's a fully lime green leaf, that is so cute. These tiny little baby variegated leaves are adorable, so adorable. Most of the leaves on the top and the sides are green. Here we have a new leaf popping out. He grows like crazy, here's another one. There's, here's another one. There's just tons of, here's an, there's probably like eight or 10 growth points on this plant uh, at all times. Okay guys, so I decided to go ahead and pull this guy down. I don't know if it's gonna work or not, but so you can really, really see how big he is. This is my philodendron, oh, melanocrysum varicosum hybrid. And he is massive. 
I got him a moss pole extension a few days ago over the weekend and put that in and guess what he is still too large for the moss pole yeah I'm gonna have to get my camera down to really show you the top of his pole is right here he is just gorgeous look at these newer leaves oh my goodness Oh, the veination in this plant is, ooh, to die for. Look at it. It looks like, I don't know, it reminds me of like lightning running through it or something. It's just so pretty. This right here is the top piece that's actually hanging down because the moss pole is not tall enough. So these are all newer leaves. We have this new growth point right here growing in all crazy and funky. And we have a new leaf right here trying to unfurl. I'll definitely show you guys this. Um, I'll take my camera around and show you better because this was a bad idea. I don't know what I was thinking. Didn't really work out too well. All right, I'm trying to pull this one down now. <laughs> okay, so I decided to pull this one down too. I, I don't know, I feel like you can't really tell how big these guys are unless I pull them down like in, with me, like unless you see me holding them. So this is my absolutely beautiful philodendron pasta zanum. Whew. Oh my goodness, gorgeous, gorgeous plant. I think this is his largest leaf here. Check it out. These leaves are amazing. They're pillowed and rippled and just, oh my goodness, they get so large. It's like the perfect pillowed heart-shaped leaf. The Philodendron Pastazanum is a creeper, as we can see here, kind of like the Gloriosum. So they don't climb or vine, but they, um, grow along the ground. They kind of creep along the ground, if you will. So, yeah, that's what he's doing here. So this here is his newest leaf. The leaves do come in rather flimsy. They're pretty thin as well, and it takes them a little while to harden off, so you really don't want to mess with the new, new leaves too much until they do harden. But this is what a new leaf looks like. He was in a small pot, he was root bound, and I up potted him a couple months ago maybe, and he's putting off good sized leaves again. I fertilized him recently. I was out of fertilizer for about two months, maybe a little longer, so none of my plants were fertilized. And they started to show signs of nutrition deficiency, and you know, they just weren't super happy, so. I finally ordered some more and I've been fertilizing again and I can definitely already tell a huge difference in the new growth. But yeah, isn't it beautiful? He does have a new leaf coming up here out of the sheath. My pasta plant. Love him. Okay, so here's where the Milano Vericosum uh, and the Pasta Zanum currently live because they're too tall for my shelves. But you can see here is there's three moss pole extensions, cocoa core extensions here, and <laughs> there's still this bunch of new growth. Here is his newest leaf, grows like crazy. And then here is Mr. Pastazanum. This plant was sitting right beside my head in frame, and I still managed to forget to talk about it. But this is my philodendron Jose Bueno and he is absolutely ooh, a stunner a stunner look at the white variegation on that new leaf poking through Ooh, that's exciting so this guy's obviously a variegated philodendron this is probably one of the coolest most stable types of variegation right here um, you literally you never know what the variegation is going to look like from leaf to leaf and i think that's a huge reason why I'm so in love with this plant. It's just, it's such a surprise and it's so fun. I mean, that is, that is white, guys. My baby is counting. Yeah, she can count to six. Like, what? That is really white. I am so excited to see what this leaf is going to look like. This is clearly his newest leaf and it's absolutely massive compared to all the other leaves. I mean, honestly, I thought they were pretty large, but this one just tops them all and the variegation, I swear, with each new leaf, the variegation is that much more beautiful. Look how pretty. And then this one, there's an old leaf. Philodendron, Jose Bueno, 
absolutely one of my all-time favorite variegated plants hands down just look at that oh my goodness amazing amazing Whew. this is just your typical beautiful trailing heartleaf philodendron cordatum cordatum there's several different names for it i've had this one for a very long time uh two years now i think i've propagated it several times look over my messy stove please he's doing really well also <sighs> This vine often gets kind of close to the burners whenever they're on, so I have to be very careful about that. I used to have a Brazil, but he was ate up with spider mites. He ended up dying. R.I.P. Okay, guys, I think that's just about it. I'm sure, like, certain that I am missing a philodendron or two. But, oh, yes, hold on. This little guy, I completely forgot about this little guy. Okay, so this is the... Silver Stripe Philodendron. This was sent to me by Alex from Beantown Houseplants in our swap. Uh, this rooted up really nicely, so I went ahead and potted him in some soil, and yeah, he's adorable. No signs of new growth just yet, but I'm patient. If there's one thing my plants have taught me, it's definitely, definitely patience. Okay guys, I think that is it this time. Yeah. I think that's it, so I'm gonna go ahead and end this now. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing all of my philodendron babies. Let me know down in the comments which one is your favorite, which ones do you have, um, and which ones do you not really care so much for? I'd be interested to know. But thank you guys again so, so much for watching. I love you. Take care, guys, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.